Are you thinking about getting a 3D printer? Well, join me today as we talk about the Odin 5 3D printer. This is part two of part of the video set as this is my second discussion on this printer. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to part two on the Odin 5 F3. So we saw me unboxing the printer, setting it up, pretty easy printer to set up and honestly I am impressed with this printer. Um, so this is part two. I've used it for a couple weeks. You guys can see I've done a couple of the prints. These are the test prints that come with the printer. Um, I wanted to do a few tests of their test prints to see how it comes out and just to get a feel for this printer with their material. And I want to discuss a more of what you can do with this printer. So we're going to break this up into a couple sections um, where we talk about basically we're going to look at the focus software. We're going to talk about just the machine. We're going to talk about the print quality straight out of the box and then just some of the features of this printer that just wow me. So. First, we're going to start off with the features, actually, <clears throat> that just wowed me about this printer for this price point. Um, and my comparison for a printer this size, the only printer I can justly compare this to is an Ender 3 and an Ender 3 V2 from Creality. Um, for the price point, yeah, this printer costs a little bit more, but the bells and whistles are definitely worth it. You've got dual Z-Rod which just makes this gantry more stable, less leveling, a really nice feature of the printer that actually you guys, if you have an Ender 3, I actually have a video on how to upgrade your Ender 3 and Ender 3 V2 to the same assembly. So, and ever since I've done it, even for those printers, I very rarely have to level anymore, which is a great feature. Leveling, we all know, kind of just sucks. And this guy kind of takes the pain out of it. Once you've leveled it, you're good and ready to trot. So the second feature I really like about this printer is the touchscreen, the color touchscreen. If you're using the Focus software and you slice your model, you actually see a picture of your model when you're going through the files looking for your model, which is pretty darn cool. Um, other features, direct drive extruder, immediate win for me right there um, in regard to this machine. It it just opens the door to material. Like right now, I currently have TPU loaded on here and had no problem printing with it. Do I need to fine tune my settings? Yeah, because this is honestly the first roll of TPU I've ever used. And there's some fine tuning I need to do there, some calibration and different things like that. But right out of the box, this printer took off, especially with PLA. Um, this is the test, these are all made out of the test PLA this is actually my standard inland PLA using their settings, and it came out fantastic. Um, I was very pleased. The only thing I didn't, I had a problem with is I did have a power outage. And this thing claims auto resume on power restore. It did not resume. But I did have a three hour power outage. Could be why. But, oh well, I still got majority of the model. So, you got Pikachu sitting in here. I mean, and this is a, actually, this is a model I sliced in Cura with my Ender 3 settings and threw on here, and it came out really good. So, all in all, the printer has great features and that ability to undo four bolts and it just fold up and put it away. So, if you're not a full time 3D printer like me and you just want something for every once in a while, this is a great solution. Because uh, having that ability to fold it up, put it away, that's actually really kind of cool. Um, and it makes the tool storable. Um, you know, it's one of those things, if I ever have to move, oh my goodness, this is gonna be a nightmare, moving all these printers. <laughs> but this guy, undo your four bolts, fold it up, walk away. The only thing I, my suggestion on the bolts is switch those to tech screws, tech bolts. That would be my only suggestion here. That way you can screw them in by hand and unscrew them really easily. Um, all in all, I love the ribbon cable approach. That was actually very different than just the wires just being in a bundle. The ribbon cable, that's a really sleek, uh, kind of honestly a good move. And the fact that they sent me extra pairs of the ribbon cables, that was, that was a shock um, to see extra cables sent to replace these if they ever get damaged. So the vendor, 
uh, Focus did a really good job on thinking about usability and long-term usability and reducing that cost for the client. So kudos on that one. That one was great. So those are some what I love about the printer. Um, great functionality. Print quality. Uh, superb, especially with the direct drive. Um, I was very pleased with how that worked out in this printer. That it just it, it opened the door to TPU, different flexibility. I wasn't restricted to just PETG, ABS, or PLA. So that is a big win for me because changing out an Ender 3 to a direct drive, which is coming, uh, that is going to be a video, um, can be a real bear to get it done. And then you've got to go through recalibrating all the E-steps and all that. Seeing that on this printer, really nice touch. It just opens this door for this printer to do a lot for you. And <clears throat> um, I mean, it's more expensive than an Ender 3, but it's just a good printer. Um, so now that I've ranted on it and talked about it and all of that, let's hop over to the computer and take a look at the Focus software. All right guys, so hopping over to the computer, I've installed the Focus software. It's up on the PC, and as you guys can see, it is a Cura reskin, and you can even check that this is running on the Cura user interface. So, But just because this shows Cura does not mean you should discard this and go to use normal Cura, because over normal Cura, when you go to add a printer, and you go to printer, and you go to add, and you go to non-network printers, guess what? They don't exist in the main Cura directory. So, um, and I looked around quite a bit and I didn't find them. So I added it as a custom printer. <clears throat> but you wanna have the Focus software. And you can see I've already added it, but I will take you through the process of adding it manually just so you guys can see this and get this into Cura. So custom FFS, I'm going to add this as the Focus Odin 5 F-3. Now I'm going to hit add. And that's going to bring me up to here. So I'm going to jump back over to the actual focus version of this. And I'm going to go to preferences and I'm going to configure. And I'm going to go to printers and I'm going to go to machine set. Well, first, before I do that, let's pull this over to the side because it'll just be easier if I pull it over to the side here a little bit. We're going to configure, we'll go to printers, We'll go to machine settings on that printer. Now you notice, none of the settings are here. Well, here's the great thing about that. Control C, so if you want this in your normal Cura, you just need to copy and paste. A lot of these default settings that come with the printer are completely correct. So we wanna get these over here. And I've got it this way. I would normally just have this over on another monitor, but I want you guys to see this. So, cause there is something important I wanna talk about. Uh, negative 20, negative 10, 10, 10, gantry height, 250, no, 10. So we want to match what we have in the Focus software. Number of extruders, one, and there's some things in here. We want to have Marlin, but these G codes are extremely important. So the G code that comes with Cure in a custom printer is completely blech. It's not going to work well you want this G code. So you need to copy or control C and you need to bring it over here, get all this G code and we need to get rid of this and replace it with theirs. This will make your printer run correctly and help out and just all in all work better. So you need to do that for both for the beginning and ending G code. So now we've got the proper G code that the printer uses and we've got to correct in here because we are not using <laughs> 2.85, we're using 1.75, and the rest of this stuff is correct. And then hit next, and boom, there you go. Your printer's been added, so we can go up here and select the F3, and you guys can see I've got my printable area. area. And then what you can do in the Focus software is just go back to here. Um, you go up to this area, click on that, and you can expand, you can hit It'll do the recommended. I recommend going to customize and you can expand all these fields to see all these settings. Then just do a side by side, add your settings to the appropriate fields here. And the same settings that were used for the test prints on your, 
that are already on the thumb drive, um, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute, um, will get you really close to those proper settings. Now, as you go through, you know, make sure what you're doing with your materials that you're, you know, if you're using TPU, um, go to generic and go try the TPU, the basic TPU. If you're using one of these brands, go for it, give it a try. Um, it pops a lot of the custom settings that Cura has found to be the best into there. So it's kind of one of those things it's worth a shot and building off of. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, like I use Inland PLA for 90% of what I do. So kind of keeping that in mind, Inland's not here. So all my stuff is from scratch. Um, and you can manage materials and create custom profiles, which is what I've done for my Inland. But um, if I'm just using a generic TPU, these settings may be great for me, um, where they may not work on your printer. Um, Cause I know some printers, like my printers, I run them at 50 degrees Celsius for the build plate, but one of my friends, he has to run it at 65 for his stuff to stick. So it all kind of depends on the machine as well. Um, we're using the same materials, but his just needs to be a little hotter than mine. Um, could be where he has the printer, could be, I don't know. So um, there are differences, but if you're using just Cura and you have multiple printers like I do, cause you guys can see I've got CR10, I've got the Ender 2, um, this is a way to bring it over into your Cura platform so you can just kind of start working with it. But that G code is very important. So make sure that you copy that G code over. So let's talk about the thumb drive. What cool stuff do you get with it? Well, you get a lot of good information. Um, you get machine accessory files. So if you need to print a part, they have several of the parts in here for you already. You get 3d resources. So these are the original STLs. So you can experiment with their test models. Um, which is really cool. Um, they have their test models pre-sliced for you. And I think I have one or two in here that I did. Um, yeah, these top halves are mine that I'm working. I'm playing with TPU. I'm trying to learn TPU. Um, that's why I keep bringing it up. It's fresh in my mind. Software, they give you a driver. Here's the focus software for you to install. I didn't do the driver because I'm not directly plugged in. And of course, you know, the most important thing to any printer that you're going to use is that user manual. So that is also on your thumb drive. So they give you a lot of good information on this card that is handy to keep around. So um, kind of keep that in mind. So software wise, very good. I love that the G codes are already preset in their software and I can move it to my Cura and start using the same codes and make the printer act as it should. So kind of keep that in mind as you're moving forward. That was just kind of a tutorial for anybody that gets a new printer. Um, it's often good to install their software and get their information and move it over to your primary slicer. Um, I'm kind of doing that right now. I purchased Simplified 3D. I'm kind of exploring that because it's got a lot of really cool tools. Um, I'm also kind of exploring the exploring the Prusa slicer a little bit because there's supposed to be a lot of really cool tools in there to fix models that just have issues. So I'm hoping to kind of expand on that and kind of make that stuff better um, and teach you guys along the way. Cause what I find out is good. I want you guys to know too, especially if you're starting out 3d printing, um, that's just kind of the goal is to help you keep going and to help keep you guys going printing. If you're having an issue and you're watching one of these videos to solve it, you know, that's what I want to do. So if you guys are liking this content, hit that subscribe button. Um, if you're interested in this printer, have questions, you know, leave me a comment down below or, you know, what are you printing today? If you are, if you do have a 3d printing, let me know. I'm kind of curious to know what everybody's up to. So let's move on. Let's wrap this one up and talk about a few more pieces about the printer. And I'll see you guys in that piece. All right, guys. So we talked about the software. We've talked about the printer itself. Um, I'm very impressed with the printer for, especially for the cost and the sales that I see these guys do. Um, I've seen these printers like $90 off down at 200 bucks, easily competing with the Ender 3 Pro costs. So, and you get more with this printer than you do an Ender 3 for the price. Um, the dual Z rod, the direct drive extruder. I mean, this printer is kind of an all in one package. Um, the only complaint I have about this printer is the fan noise. And that's something we will touch on in another video is me replace we're going to open up the bottom of this we're going to start taking a look at the fans see what we can do to replace them make this guy a whole lot quieter and ready to work but all in all like i said this printer is very unique in the field that i can undo the bolts fold it up put it away on my tool bench when i'm not using it um, i do recommend getting a cover to lay over it so you don't get a whole bunch of dust and dirt on it especially if you're out in a wood shop or something like that you don't want that to happen but all in all this printer it's just unique 
um, for what it is, and it's one I'm glad to have in my shop. So when it comes to a beginner printer, this guy kind of takes the cake um, in what I've been doing. Um, my, I've been a huge fanboy of the Ender 3 as a beginner, but in all in all, this one will take you a lot further, and it's very easy to start with. And it's starting out just the same as an Ender 3, with less hassle of assembly, and just usability is awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, we covered a lot of different things with this, my impressions. I've used this printer now for a few weeks, and honestly, I really like it. So I hope you guys do. Links down in the description to find this printer out on Amazon at their store. Um, I am an Amazon affiliate, so I do appreciate any, if you guys go to get one, hit that link and, you know, help me out a little bit in keeping the channel going. Again, if you enjoyed the content, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys in the next video.